Hey everybody, Walt here for Overkill Projects. Today I am sweating like crazy in a 100 degree garage because I am going to try to turn this pile of tree flesh into a workbench without seriously maiming myself. So stay tuned to see if I end up in the hospital. Let's go. All right, so here's the deal. My partner has been extremely patient with me as I have uh, completely defaced our deck furniture by continually drilling a bunch of holes into it. So I've decided that I'll give her a break and uh, instead I'm gonna go ahead and build myself a workbench that I can do some work on. My requirements are super minimal. This is pretty much just going to be a surface for me to do sort of little projects on. So it just needs to be relatively heavy, be able to bear a pretty good amount of downward force, be relatively fireproof, but that's not super critical. Now, all told, the actual wood that you see here, I don't think ran me over $30, give or take. And uh, with the hardware, we're talking under 50. And now I just had a quick look because I thought, you know, I probably could have done this even less and I'm right. Uh, you might wanna check on your, whatever your local, online marketplace uh, classified ads thing is in the area of Allentown, Pennsylvania, up here in the sometimes beautiful Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. Uh, people regularly have scrap wood available. Um, and even sort of the little hardware pieces I'm going to use here, there's a pretty good chance that if you posted a looking for ad somewhere, you're probably gonna be able to get it for nothing or next to nothing as long as you go cart it off yourself. So. If you look there, you actually might be able to build yourself a free workbench. Heck, I've even seen people giving away workbenches for free on those things, so you could maybe bypass this whole thing, but then this video would be really short and boring. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually build this thing. And now the design I'm following, I'll put somewhere here. I guess, you know, maybe you'll see like a, a drawing or something. I haven't decided what I'll do for that yet, but it's relatively simple. All we're really gonna do here is build out um, two framing portions. Uh, one of those is going to actually, uh, it's gonna be up at the top and that's going to be up against the, you know, the, the top of the workbench. The second one will be uh, about halfway down the legs. I'm actually not sure that you would even need that, but I'm going to add it down below anyway, just because it might give me, um, if I need it, another surface to put more tools or stuff on at some point. And now, before we get started, to cut all of this down to size, I literally just asked somebody at the lumber yard if they could do it for me. So this was just a handful of cuts. Most of them were literally just cutting uh, the two by fours in half. So uh, our, our surface here is going to be uh, roughly something like two feet by four feet, which is 24 by 48 inches, which I'll put somewhere in millimeters. I'm, can use the metric system, but not like that. And so that's a very convenient size because two by fours often come, at least here in the States, in eight foot uh, lengths. So having that cut in half leaves me with uh, four foot sections. And so you can see here, these are actually uh, closer to nine feet that were cut down. So it's really gonna be about a four and a half foot. And these are two by sixes. So that four of them across is going to give us uh, about two feet worth of width for our table here. Over here we have uh, eight foot lengths of two by fours that were just cut in half. So these are four feet each. These are just going to be for the frame. Um, these were 10 foot sections that I had cut in quarters. I'm gonna use these for the legs. Now, when you build yours, you want your, uh, the height of the table, the final height of the table to be somewhere between maybe 32 and 36 inches, depending on your height. And so all that left me with was the cross beams for the framing part of this. Uh, and that's what you see down here. Now, each of these I did 22 inches long, taking into account that there's gonna be an extra three or four inches on, you know, total width of that when I bang on the, the, the other four foot frames. Okay, I think that's all the background you need. Somewhere in here, I will put up sort of a little thing that shows you what each size was just for the record. And again, I'm gonna link in somewhere, maybe down below the actual plans that I'm using for this uh, so that if you wanted to follow those, you could. Of course, keeping in mind that I don't do this professionally or anything, so. Uh, this is just some guy in his garage putting together the cheapest workbench that he could dream up. All right, let's get started actually assembling this. 
first things first, I gotta make sure that the top gets done by the time I wanna screw it on. So I just lay out the wood. I'm gonna glue along the inside of each board. Uh, just clamp it together and then let it sit, preferably on top of something so I don't get glue all over the garage floor. And now I'm actually gonna use lag screws for the frame. And for these, they have a, a shank here. So I'm gonna need to drill out the shank uh, about a half an inch and then uh, drill out pilot holes so that the, the torque from screwing them down doesn't just rip the tops right off the lag screws. Now it's just a matter of measuring out the intervals that I need to secure the support beams. They're gonna be you know perpendicular to this. There's four of them, so I just need to measure out four even intervals. Then it's just a matter of drilling out the shank holes and the pilot holes, which I'm aware that I'm probably doing it in the wrong order here, but hey, it worked. And I don't have a ton of room here, so I'm just gonna drill out the top lag screw hole in each one of these support beams. And then that's just a bit of a starter hole, so then I'll stand each one up, finish drilling out the hole, apply a little bit of glue, and then we'll screw all of those down before starting on the second lag screw. And now that those are all fastened down, I'm just gonna go ahead and drill out the holes for the second lag screws and screw those all in. So far, so great. Now it's just a matter of flipping this bad boy over, drilling another set of holes and, you know, securing it away. Uh, just making sure that everything looks more or less in line as I screw everything down. This is certainly not a precision job, so it's pretty much just get things the way I think they should look. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And now to fasten the legs to the frame, I'm gonna use these half inch lag bolts. I think they're like eight or 10 inches or way too long. And of course, if you're making holes in wood and you wanna do it quickly and cleanly, make sure you use spade drill bits. And now these bolts were left over from a previous project. You might've seen the vise that I have sitting around my desk in, a, in an earlier video. You don't really have to go this route. This is certainly overkill. You could use uh, far smaller bolts here or even really you could probably use nails and this would hold together just fine. Uh, but like I said, I had these laying around and it's not overkill if it's not overkill. So no big surprises here. I'm just going to drill out the four holes that I want. This is pretty much eyeballed. I just have to be within three inches of the corner here and everything is going to be great. And now just one by one, I line up the legs with those holes. I make a little bit of a starter hole. And then the plan is to flip these over and just sort of finish drilling out the hole um, you know, by, by themselves. But of course, what you can see that I did here is I put the, uh, the clamps on backwards, so to speak. So I needed to flip those over in order to be able to actually lean these down and drill the final hole. So if you're doing this the same way, make sure you look out for that and put the, the clamp on the right way. And now once I got everything the right direction, I just go ahead and finish drilling out the hole and then I'm gonna just lather, rinse, repeat. I got that three more times, do the other three legs and then we can move on to the next step. And here's the hardware for each leg. The bolt's no surprise. And then of course we have one of those little self-gripping uh, washers for the top. Washer, I hardly know her. Then another washer, a lock washer, and a nut for the, uh, for the bottom. Now it's just a matter of pushing our hardware through each leg and securing it down. You can see here that I am probably not using the right tool for the job. I just took a pair of pliers and started, you know, cranking down the, the nut. Uh, I, it's nice you don't, if you use one of those little self-locking washers in the top, then you don't have to worry about anything slipping. So all you have to do is sort of get it started and then just kind of keep cranking and they go right in. So then just do that, you know, four times and boom, we got our legs. I'm not sure how a professional would handle this sort of thing, but my idea for making sure that the second frame is about halfway down the legs is to get four pieces of scrap wood uh, that are about 12 inches long each. I clamp those to the legs and then I just slid the second frame down on top of those. And of course those all just stopped it from falling and it made it really easy. Now all I had to do is drill new holes the way I did for the last thing. Uh, but now I could just go all the way through and then just, you know, bolt those on and you know, boom, ready to go. This next bit is optional and it's why I only made the legs two and a half feet long each is that I have uh, four inch casters that I'm gonna put on the bottom of this thing so I can wheel it around without everything just you know rolling off the top of the workbench, uh, especially since I'm you know probably gonna use it for video in the future. Now I drilled pilot holes at the end of each one of the legs, but that was probably completely unnecessary since these are going in with the grain of the wood. But yeah, just screw them down, ready to go. And then we can pop it upright and wheel it around a little bit and ta-da! It works great. So now all that remains is to fasten the top to the frame. I thought, sure, I'll do this upside down, drag the top out, you know, turn it upside down and then screw everything down. But it turns out that I am an idiot and I went ahead and made the wrong size top. 
Did you catch my mistake? The problem was earlier when I said that I needed to cut the uh, the support beams here uh, to be 22 inches long. That was incorrect. I needed them to be 22 inches, the frames total in width, not 22 inches per thing. So that means I had to run back to the lumber yard, pick up another two by four, have it cut down in half the exact same way, bring it back here, glue everything together, reclamp it and let it dry once again before I could screw the top to the frame. And so in case you were wondering, I highly recommend not making this mistake yourself. Okay, now that I finally built the right sized bench top, I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on top of the, uh, the frame over here and, uh, and screw it down. So what I'm gonna use is uh, these little L brackets that you can pick up you know, anywhere. These are actually made for, uh, for putting together outdoor decking. Uh, they take, this is like a, a four screw one. They make longer plates and shorter ones. And, uh, and so, you know, you can sort of buy what's appropriate for you. You can just use little 45 degree triangles, wedges of wood like this, and then just sort of, you know, prop it between the two pieces and, and nail that way or even use wood screws to secure the top to the to the frame and of course that's a much cheaper option and it's really probably just as good as what i'm doing here uh, for the type of thing that i'm going to use this for i don't need that much strength honestly i probably could have put this entire thing together with nothing but nails and wood screws and it would have been fine but you know it's called overkill projects for a reason so it's overkill Here's the underside of the workbench, and you can see how easy this is. It's just a matter of screwing in the four screws. I actually made pilot holes for these as well. I don't know that that was necessary. I kind of suspect not. But anyway, I think I actually screwed one of those into each of the beams that I used for the top of the workbench. Again, this is completely overkill. I'm positive that just gluing these boards together would have been more than enough for how I'll use this workbench. And there we have it. One overkill workbench, a la overkill. Beautiful. It'll serve my purposes. All right, there we go. Bench top finish, workbench finish. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I'm so tired. That really wore me out. Mismeasuring the, the base for this thing was <laughs> an incredibly stupid mistake. I cannot believe that I did that. That's ridiculous. The thing that's so funny is, you know, I go over to my friend's house to saw some wood and of course I spend the entire time chit-chatting about any old thing and not paying any attention to what I should be doing. Uh, so lesson learned. If I have to do this again in the future, I will not be making that mistake twice. And here's the great thing about YouTube. If you watched me do this, you won't make the same mistake yourself. I hope. So at any rate, this is ready to go next time. We are going to be turning uh, this delightful little toasting device into an, an SMD reflow oven. So that's kind of awesome. And then we'll have that to do uh, surface mount projects. It's way better than blowing components all over my apartment with the, uh, with the blow dryer. So hopefully that one will go more smoothly. I imagine it will go more smoothly than uh, building this workbench did. Uh, but hopefully watching this you learned how maybe not to do a bunch of things if you're doing this sort of project for yourself. And maybe you learned a couple of things that you could use. We'll see. And if not, then hopefully you were just entertained at watching me be completely ridiculous. And if you did, please give me the thumbs up down below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can watch me uh, turn toasters into other things and a whole bunch of other projects we have coming up down the line that we actually need this thing for. So uh, stay tuned, make sure you sign up for the alerts, uh, comment down below if there's anything you want to say, ask, see, talk about, whatever. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So I'll see you guys next time. Happy building.